of Elijah. We find Elijah in chapter 17 having uh, told King Ahab that there was going to be a drought. A drought has come, the drought has lasted for three years, and then at the very beginning of 18, we see Elijah speaking, or God speaking to Elijah, saying to Elijah that it was time, that it was going to rain. Elijah heads on his way out. He begins to talk to, uh, first of all, Obadiah. Tells Obadiah to go get King Ahab. Obadiah says, no, I can't because as soon as I leave to go get him, the Lord is going to ferry you away to somewhere else. Elijah says, as the Lord lives today, I'm going to meet with your master. So he goes and Obadiah gets Ahab. Ahab comes and meets with the prophet of God. The prophet of God says, join all of Israel. As a matter of fact, not just Israel, but I want you to bring the false prophets of Baal, the 450. I want you to bring the 400 prophets of Astra to meet with me at Mount Carmel. One of the, 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 the uh, most interesting testimonies through this story is that the, the evil king obeys and does what the prophet tells him to do. He takes all of Israel and brings them to Mount Carmel. He gets the 450 prophets of Baal all on top of Mount Carmel. And Elijah says, today, today there's going to be a showdown. He tells the prophets uh, of Baal, you guys pick a bull, you get your altar, you get your wood, you get it ready, but don't set any fire under it. I'll take the other bull, I'll get my wood, prepare my altar, and I won't put any fire under mine. Then we're going to begin to cry out to our gods, and whosoever God answers with fire, he is indeed God. The prophets of Baal, we see them, they, they begin to uh, prepare their altar, they begin to prepare their sacrifice, and then they begin to cry out to Baal that Baal might answer them and send fire. And we see they begin this crying out early in the morning. And they go until noon. Finally, the prophet of God, Elijah, begins to heckle them. He begins to laugh at them and say, you know, maybe your God's asleep or maybe he's meditating. Um, maybe he's off on a journey. Maybe you just need to scream louder. Well, this uh, antagonation uh, took place and the prophets of Baal begin to get ever more wild and ever more crazy. They begin to, you know, cry out all the latter, begin to slice themselves, the Word of God says in 1 Kings 18, uh, with knives and with spears until their blood literally gushed. Then Elijah comes up at about the time of the evening sacrifice and he prepares his altar. He prepares the stones of the altar, the wood, the bull. But then he does something that's very curious. He tells the servants to dump water over it. And four times he tells these servants to do so, so that the, the sacrifice is waterlogged, the wood is waterlogged, the altar is waterlogged, even to the point there was a trench that Elijah had built around the altar that was filled with water. Then Elijah stood before the children of Israel, and he boldly proclaims, God, answer with fire today so that your people might know that you are the Lord God, that you are Jehovah Elohim, that you are the one true ruler, that you are the one true judge, that you are the one true Lord of all. Suddenly, I mean, just get the picture in your mind. Suddenly, God answers out of heaven with a, 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 a fireball, a pillar of fire, whatever. I mean, I don't know. But boom, comes down. It ignites the sacrifice. It ignites the wood. It ignites the stone. It uh, licks up all the water and the dust that are in the trench till there's nothing left. And the children of Israel then begin to proclaim, The Lord, He is God. Jehovah, He is Elohim. Jehovah, He is our Elohim. They, they begin to proclaim, and uh, just a quick little word study before I move on. When Elijah is standing before the altar, before God sends fire, he says that they might know you as Jehovah Elohim. That word know is to yada. That is to be experienced with, to be skilled in, to be intimate with you as the Lord God. And then after God sends fire, that, that, that repentance takes place on the inside of the children of Israel, and they proclaim they have come to know, to experience, to be skilled and intimate with Jehovah as Elohim. They are experienced with Him as the Lord, the judge, the ruler of all that is. Then something uh, interesting uh, begins to take place. You know, Elijah goes to the top of Carmel. He sends uh, away uh, the children of Israel. He sends away Ahab, and he begins to pray. And he tells King Ahab, you must go because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. He goes up on top of Mount Carmel. He, uh, the Word of God says he, he bows down. He puts his head to the ground between his legs, and he tells his servant, servant, go up and check. 
servant comes back and says, I, I haven't seen anything. I mean, you know, there's nothing there. Seven times the servant goes up at Elijah's request, and seven times he comes back down. And on the seventh time, when he comes back down, he says, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. You see, Elijah wasn't anxious. He wasn't worried. He wasn't concerned. He wasn't beginning to fret. He knew that he had seen something in the spirit realm. He knew that he had, he had, he had caught a glimpse of vision and purpose and destiny. And he, he, all he was doing really was waiting on the physical to line up with the spiritual. He was waiting um, for those things that God had shown him. He had seen them. He had spoken them and he had seized them. And now he was just simply waiting for the physical realm to line up with the spiritual realm. And that's what he does. He waits there. The servant goes up, he comes down, he goes up, he comes down, he goes up. He's seven times he does this. And then finally, the very last time, the very last time... The servant comes back and he says, I see a cloud so small, it's the size of a man's hand arising over the sea. Elijah knew at that moment the physical was beginning to line up with the spiritual. And as he knew that, he says to the servant, quickly, go to Ahab. Tell him to prepare his chariot, man, because there is coming a great deluge. There, God hasn't rained on the land for three years, and buddy, it's going to rain like it hasn't rained in a long time. The servant runs down. He tells Ahab, prepares his chariot. Ahab begins to head off to Jezreel. And the Word of God says that in the meantime, towards the end of chapter 18, in the meantime, Elijah tucks his cloak, uh, uh, or... He tucks his cloak in, and, and while this is all taking place, the clouds begin to gather. The wind begins to blow, and the deluge comes out. You know, as we read through this portion of Scripture, we need to keep in mind that, that the point of the Scripture uh, was not the talk that Elijah has with Obadiah on the way. Uh, the, the point of this portion of Scripture was not the wicked, evil king obeying the voice of the righteous prophet. The point of the scripture was not the false prophets crying out to Baal. You know, really, uh, it wasn't even about the fire falling from heaven. Those all make it a beautiful, wonderful story, but understand that the story leads to a single place. And it bears mentioning right now that um, in this portion of scripture, we read it, it it's a story. But keep in mind that this is reality. This is, this is history. This man is actually walking through these things. He is actually doing this stuff. And, and he is a mere man. When he speaks to the king, he has the same, uh, probably, anxiety, fear, um, wondering as he's standing. Uh, there must have been a measure of, of anxiety as he's standing before the 450 prophets of Baal asking God to answer with fire. But my friends, even in the midst of that anxiety, that angst, when we step out in faith, we can see the hand of God move. But understand that so many times it's not just about that miracle. Brothers and sisters, I want to see those miracles. But even more than that, I want to see lives changed. I want to see the rain fall. I want to see salvations brought to the Lord. The fire was not even the point. The fire was just the means to get to the rain. And my friends, God desires to pour out His rain upon His people. But in order for this to take place, we as God's people, well, we've got to begin to yada Him as Jehovah Elohim. We must begin to be experienced and skilled and intimate with that knowledge that He is indeed the Lord God that He is the ruler, that He is the Lord of all, He is the judge, He is the creator. My friends, Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. He is the first and the last, the Son of God, the Son of Man. He is that Lamb that was slain from the very foundation of the world. He is the King of all other kings. He is the Prince of Peace. Now we must come to Yada, that is to be experienced and skilled and intimate with that knowledge. And as we are skilled in that knowledge, then God will send out a deluge upon His people, a, a blessing. 
a, a, a torrent of rain and, and, and absolute purpose and passion that God's people will not be able to contain it. So I say to you today, my friend, will you allow God to pour out upon you? Well, do you desire it? I can tell you I do. But in order for that to take place, I must come to be experienced and skilled in Him as the Lord God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, do what you have to do that we might be more skilled in, more experienced with you as our Lord God. Father, come and have your way. We prepare our lives even now, Jesus, for that blessing you desire to pour out upon your people, God. Send your deluge, O oh God. Send, Father, I speak forth in the name of Jesus to each person watching today that you would, that, that Father, you would uh, cause them to know you as God and they might experience the blessing of that, that yada. Father, we give you all glory and honor and bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. This has been Pastor Joshua Goodman with your weekly word. Be blessed and I will see you next week.